Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 13 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. In this video, I will be discussing the physical properties of alcohols and phenols. As you know that the functional group in alcohols and phenols is OH. So when OH is attached to an alkyl group, it is known as an alcohol. And when OH is attached to an aryl group, that is a benzene ring, it is known as a phenol. So the physical properties of alcohols and phenols basically are because of this OH group. So let us understand the OH group. We've studied the properties of water and we know that water also can be written as H and OH. So the OH group is present in water also. And since the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen is large, they form um, the molecules, the adjacent molecules, the hydrogens of adjacent molecules are attracted to the extremely electronegative oxygen of the adjacent molecule. And therefore, they form a kind of a, um, a kind of a what pseudo bond. It's not a real bond, but it's a pseudo bond. That attraction is so strong that they stay together. The attraction uh, does not let them move apart. So it, we call it a bond, while actually it is not a bond. It's a pseudo bond. The attraction is so strong that they are unable to move away from each other. So that kind of a bonding is known as a hydrogen bond. You already know about that. And alcohols and phenols also have the same situation, you know, oxygen and hydrogen. The great electronegativity difference between them. So the hydrogen, which is the most electropositive um, non-metal, and oxygen, which is very electronegative. The electronegativity difference between them makes them kind of mix it kind of polar in nature. So what happens? The H, which is positive, will be attracted to the oxygen of the adjacent molecule. So the hydrogen of this molecule is attracted to the oxygen of the adjacent molecule, thereby forming, do you see the dashes here? It's not a proper single line to show a bond. The dashes show that there is a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond is represented by a broken line. So that you know it's not a proper bond, but it's not something that leaves the other molecule free to move around also. It's a pseudo bond. So uh, this bond exists between them due to which the molecules, they are held together strongly. More strongly than they would if there was no hydrogen bond. So what, how does this affect the uh, physical properties? Whenever... A mo the molecules of a substance are attracted strongly, what, what physical property is it going to affect? It is going to affect its boiling point, right? What is boiling? Boiling is where you want to turn the substance and move the molecules away from each other. And you cannot move them away from each other because there is a special, whatever bonding is there is there. Van der Waals forces are already there. But in addition to that, the hydrogen bond is also there, which is not letting the molecules move apart. So, if you have uh, an alcohol or a phenol and other compounds, other hydro hydrocarbons, which have similar um, molecular masses, their, boil uh, their boiling points, the alcohols and phenols will have a higher boiling point in comparison to the others which do not have hydrogen bonds. So, that is one thing that is affected due to the OH, um, due to the OH, uh, the presence of OH in the molecule. That is the boiling point. And the second thing that is the second physical property that is affected is its solubility. Solubility in water, because water already forms hydrogen bonds. If you dissolve like, dissolves like, if you dissolve something in water, and you know that water is polar in nature, and therefore it dissolves polar solutes. A polar solvent will dissolve polar solutes. And the presence of this OH kind of lends the polarity to the alcohols and phenols. Pure hydrocarbons will not have that kind of polarity, so they will be insoluble in water. But this polarity, which is rendered by the OH group to the alcohols and phenols, makes them soluble in water. But that solubility also will depend on the rest, the remaining part of the molecule. 
the OH is a very small part. If the alkyl or the aryl part is, becomes bigger and bigger, then that part starts dominating. And therefore, the solubility gets lesser and lesser. Right? So, let us see. Let, let me read both the properties to you. Uh, first, physical properties are mainly due to the OH group. The nature of the alkyl and the aryl group only modifies these properties. The basic property is because of these hydrogen bonds. Or why because of the OH group? Because the OH group forms hydrogen bonds. And what are the properties that are affected? The, pres the, alkyl, the size of the alkyl and the aryl group is only going to modify these properties. It is only going to add a little bit to it. Uh, it will kind of modify it, increase it slightly or decrease it slightly. The first property is boiling points. Point A. The boiling point of ROH, that is alcohols, and AROH, which is phenols. The boiling points of alcohols and phenols increase with an increase in the number of carbon atoms. It is understood. When the alkyl group, as the alkyl group becomes bigger, you know, methane is present as a gas in nature. Ethane, propane, butane, they are all present as gases. But when you come to pentane, it turns into a liquid. So as the size of the, the carbon chain increases, the compound becomes heavier and heavier. And the heavier it becomes, one, it affects the physical state. Two, it affects its boiling point also. Because the heavier it is, the more difficult it is to boil it and turn it into a vapor. So, we say the boiling point of alcohols and phenols increases with increase in the number of carbon atoms. This is logical that if the molecule is bigger, obviously it's heavier, obviously you need more heat, more energy to boil it or to allow it to move away from the liquid and evaporate. So, or vaporize. So, increase... Uh, the boiling point of ROH, I, I, sorry I'm repeating it so many times, the boiling point of ROH and AROH increases with increase in number of carbon atoms. Why does this happen? If we even ignore the OH part, this simply happens with any kind of compound because there is an increase in the van der Waals forces, an increase in the mass and the surface area of the substance will increase the van der Waals forces, increase in mass will as it is make it difficult for it to evaporate. What is the second factor which affects the boiling point in alcohols and phenols? In alcohols, the boiling point decreases with increasing in the branching of the chain. Now, this you can understand from this point. That as the number of carbon atoms increases, the size of the molecule increases. As the size of the molecule increases, the van der Waals forces, the surface area increases. And van der Waals forces are dependent on the surface. So the more surface it has, the more van der Waals forces. As the branching of a molecule starts, the, let us say that there is a carbon chain that is one, two, three. They are, it's a straight chain. Do you see it's a larger molecule? It's long, it has a lot of surface area, the rest are all hydrogens. So it's a large molecule. If you imagine that there was a fourth one also, um, imagine that it is such a large molecule, right? But if there is a branching in the chain, if the molecule is such that it turns into a tetrahedron or more circular structure, the more branching there is, the smaller the molecule becomes. You know, the more spherical it becomes. A linear molecule will have more surface area. If you turn that into a little, uh, like if you have a thread, and uh, I have this. <laughs> what an example. If you have a single thread, it, is, it has a lot of surface area. But if I wrap it and I turn it into a small little ball, right? If it is branched or it is the structure is made into, it comes into my hand. The surface area is decreased so much. So the same thing is the effect of branching. As branching occurs, the long chain, the ends of the chain, they start breaking and they start forming branches. And the molecule starts becoming more and more spherical. And the more spherical it becomes, the surface area starts decreasing. When the surface area starts decreasing, the van der Waals forces 
obviously will be less because they depend the more surface there is the more it will attract on the sides with lesser surface less it will attract van der waals forces go down therefore the boiling point will also go down so in alcohols the boiling point decreases with increase in branching in carbon chain due to a decrease in van der waals forces with a decrease in surface area do you understand it now that as the branching occurs the surface area decreases when surface area decreases van der waals forces decrease and when van der waals forces are less now you don't have to give that much heat for the molecule to be able to escape so these are structures of alcohols where you are, we are showing the hydrogen bonding ROH ROH this is uh, this is more of a linear structure how you would make it on pen and paper and this is a little more we've tried to make it uh, appear a little more realistic although this is also in two dimensions so we show that this oxygen has three bonds and the hydrogen is here and it attaches itself and you are trying to kind of show how it is not actually linear how this hydrogen may be forming a hydrogen bond with the oxygen of the adjacent molecule which must be in its surroundings on the other side also so we try to make it slightly three-dimensional it's the same structure similarly phenol if you see phenol is a benzene ring in which OH is attached again adjacent phenol molecules oxygen of one molecule will form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of the adjacent molecule and so on thus resulting in formation of molecules which appear to be giants while actually they are individual molecules but they are attached to each other by these pseudo bonds which are known as hydrogen bonds and more realistic structure would be this so boiling points of alcohols and phenols are higher than other classes of compounds. Why? It, they will be higher than those classes of compounds which do not have hydrogen bond. Their boiling point is higher because of the hydrogen bonding. Van der Waals forces are common to all molecules. But hydrogen bonding is only in those uh, classes of compounds which will have uh, an electronegative atom like oxygen, uh, like chlorine, which is attached to hydrogen. So in those cases where a hydrogen bond is possible, only in those cases uh, you will have a compound which will, um, like in the case of halo uh, uh, alkanes and haloarenes, the hydrogen is attached to car, uh, sorry, the chlorine or the uh, halogen is attached to the carbon. It is not attached to hydrogen. So hydrogen bonding will only occur when it is attached to hydrogen. So haloalkenes and haloarenes also do not form hydrogen bonds. I just want to clarify that so that you don't get confused by my mentioning chlorine. So when you have, since they have, they form hydrogen bonds, therefore their boiling points are higher than other classes of compounds which do not have the hydrogen bonds. So they have higher boiling points due to the hydrogen bonding. Their boiling points are greater than hydrocarbons, ethers, haloalkanes and haloarenes of comparable molecular mass which means that if you have <coughs> molecules which have almost the same molecular masses belonging to different categories like one of them is a is an alcohol one is a phenol one is a hydrocarbon one is an ester uh, uh, sorry ether one is a haloalkane or a haloarene even if all of them have almost the same molecular mass you will find that the alcohol and phenol will have higher boiling points than the rest of them. For example, ethanol and propane. Ethanol is an alcohol, propane is a hydrocarbon. Ethanol and propane have comparable molecular masses. This is propane and this is ethanol. Their molecular masses are 46 grams per mole and 44 grams per mole. Comparable, almost the same. And But the the boiling points differ widely. What are the boiling points? This is this has a boiling point of 351 Kelvin and this has a boiling point of 231 Kelvin. Imagine the difference. It is uh, it's 1.5 times almost uh, one and a half times greater. So the boiling point difference is great because in propane, which is a hydrocarbon, there is no hydrogen bonding, but in ethanol there is hydrogen bonding. Let me take another example of a compound that is methoxymethane. The boiling point, methoxymethane also has the same, is almost in the same range of molecular mass. 46, 46, 44. 
right? But its boiling point is intermediate between the two. Here, there is no proper hydrogen bonding, but there is oxygen, so which is electronegative. And uh, well, the structure of the molecule and everything, there, it its boiling point is naturally higher than propane due to whenever there is a functional group, that functional group kind of makes the uh, uh, lends its own properties to the molecule. So methoxymethane has a boiling point which is intermediate, propane is the lowest and the alcohol that is ethanol will have the highest boiling point although all of them have almost the same masses. So boiling point of methoxymethane is intermediate between the two. The next property that is affected by the OH group is solubility. As I told you, water is a polar solvent. It already forms hydrogen bonds between water. You know, water has uh, forms ice and ice floats on water. The reason for it is that the hydrogen bond is slightly longer. So what happens when the hydrogen, it is a pseudo bond, but it kind of pushes the molecule a little away. In the liquid form, the molecules will be touching and slipping and sliding over each other. But when the hydrogen bond is formed, it is slightly longer. So it kind of pushes the molecule away, but does not let it go holds it in place. So the ice becomes less dense than water and that is the reason why ice floats on water. And that is the reason why we have aquatic life. Even in Antarctica, you have aquatic life because the ice is on the surface. The ice usually even at places where lakes get frozen, rivers or anything that gets frozen, the frozen sheet is only on top because ice floats on water and under it is water in which the fish can easily survive. That's interesting, you know. So solubility, anyway, we were talking about solubility. Alcohols and phenols, they dissolve in water. Why do they dissolve? Due to the formation of hydrogen bonds with it. With it. If they are forming hydrogen bonds with water, water already forms hydrogen bonds. And when you put these phenols and alcohols, they also go and form hydrogen bonds. Since they form hydrogen bonds, they can easily mingle with the water molecules. The hydrocarbons do not have any such facility. They go into the water molecule. The water molecule already has a little bit of hydrogen bonding there and does not let these molecules enter. So they kind of float on top. So you see petrol, which mainly consists of lots of hydrocarbons, floats over water. Oils usually float over water. So but alcohols and phenols, they dissolve in water. So solubility, but what happens to the solubility? The lower alcohols are usually completely miscible. You know about methanol, ethanol. So they dissolve in water completely. The alcohol that is that is uh, that people drink is ethanol. So that is completely soluble in water. Although the one that is there in the laboratory, nobody ever drinks that because uh, that can actually <laughs> cause death. So it is, there is, um, uh, you're not supposed to drink that. It has been manipulated in a way that it is only a chemical and the source is different. So never try to consume that. I'm just letting you know that ethanol that people use for uh, consumption is absolutely soluble just to tell you an example. So solubility decreases with increase in size. Why? Because in an alcohol or phenol, the OH is only this much. But if the alkyl part is becoming bigger and bigger, then the OH part is so small that how many hydrogen bonds? It'll go, it's going to make only one hydrogen bond. But the rest of the giant molecule is more like a hydrocarbon. What It is the alkyl group. So that does not participate. That does not help in the solubility. So all the solubility depends on that OH part. Therefore, as the size of the alkyl group increases, the solubility of the alcohol decreases. Solubility decreases with increase in size of the alkyl or the allyl group. Most of the lower alcohols that I told you, methanol, ethanol, propanol, they are completely miscible with water because they are small molecules. The alkyl part is small or the aryl part is small, phenol and OH is kind of important there when the rest of the part is small. So they, these little molecules can very easily dissolve in water because the number of OH, every molecule will form that OH bond and there are so many that are close by, so they will completely dissolve. So you have CH3, CH2, CH2OH. So what is this? This is propanol. And H2O, this is a water molecule, this is a water molecule. So oxygen of the OH, 
of uh, of propanol this this one lone pair of electrons will be used to make a hydrogen bond here and not the lone pair of electrons as it is I should say but yes the negative charge is basically electrons and the second would be used to make a hydrogen bond with another water molecule and thus the water molecules which are surrounding it they are kind of the OH of the uh, this OH is of the CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. This is a hydrogen of the OH. So this forms, a, the hydrogen forms a hydrogen bond with the oxygen of the water molecule and the oxygen of the OH forms hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of the water molecule. Thus the bonding, you see it has, it has kind of tra uh, locked itself with three water molecules. So it is soluble in water. So that was, these were the physical properties of alcohols and phenols. With this, I'll wind up this video. If you wish to watch other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the um, video. And if you found my video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.